Vice President Harris, my name is Jim McCollum. I am the Gold Star Father of United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. Killed in Afghanistan, August 26, 2021. Your recent remarks related to Trump's visit to Arlington are filled with nothing but lies and deceit. How do you sleep at night knowing it was you, this administration, you and Biden, you being the last one in the room, are responsible for the death of our 13 kids? The show you've been waiting for. If this is your first time tuning into the Miguel Lopez show, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share so we can continue bringing you up the best content. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great regret that I have to do this video. But as a journalist, as someone who's out here to give you the truth, to stand up for our values, to stand up for America, to stand up for freedom of speech for the First Amendment, I must continue providing information, even if I'm uncomfortable with what I must report. Some of you might have seen online or the news media, they portraying this news and trying to make it what it was not. Of former President Donald J.T. Trump at the Arlington Cemetery, setting up the reefs to an event remembering the fallen 13, to an event that he was invited by the Gold Star family, to an event that is yet to be attended by the current administration. President Trump was invited by the Gold Star family. They saying invite, they saying words to the current administration, to the Biden administration, to Vice President Harris. They have never come to the event. They have never said the name of any of those fallen soldiers which they are responsible for. All those Marines, all those young brothers in arms, the sisters in arms that lost their life when they withdrew from Afghanistan in such a terrible freaking way. And I know, I understand that many of you that are still in the Democratic plantation are going to say this is a plan that Donald Trump drafted himself. He orchestrated the plan of withdrawing from Afghanistan. Yes, when he worked the plan out for 18 months, no American soldier, no American citizen, no ally, to the American forces was harmed in Afghanistan. And you telling me that the minute the Biden Harris are in administration, are in the White House, they withdraw from Afghanistan in such a terrible way, in a way that no one in the right mind would do. I'm sorry, this is a tough subject for me, but the most damaging thing is seeing the videos of those people falling from the airplane, those people getting crossed in the runways, those 13 U.S. American service members that were killed, from Lance Corporal to staff sergeant, to sergeant, corpsman, and Kamala Harris and Joe Biden has yet to say any of the names, has yet to contact the family and show any remorse because they were the one responsible of such an awful withdrawal from Afghanistan that ultimately caused the life of these young, brave Marines and sailors and Army and everyone that was part of this disastrous withdrawal. They have not said their names, but yet Vice President Kamala Harris has the audacity to go and blast Donald 
Trump because he attended the Arlington commemorance of the fallen because there were videos which the family said it was okay to do. And they try to make it all into this political agenda and everything. And before you Democrats go crazy and start blasting the comment and talking out of your butt, I'm just gonna read what Kamala Harris said. As Vice President, I have had the privilege of visiting Arlington National Cemetery several times. It is a solemn place, a place where we come together to honor American heroes who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service of this nation. It's not a place for politics. If there is one thing on which we as Americans can all agree, it is that our veterans, military families, and service members should be honored, never, dis never disparaged, and treated with nothing less than our highest respect and gratitude. And it is my belief that someone who can make this simple, sacred duty should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America. I will honor, I will always honor the service and sacrifices of all Americans' fallen heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice on behalf of our beloved nation and I cherish freedom. I mourn them and salute them. This is what Kamala Harris had to share on her S account. Now, I agree with her in a couple of things. This is a solemn and sacred place that should never be disrespected because so many of our fallings are there. Friends of mine are there. Some friends of you who are watching this show might be there very too. I do not believe this was a political event. This was an invitation extended to Donald Trump by the Gold Star family, which they also have contacted the Harris Biden administration and they have yet to respond to answer anything to give up. I am sorry for your loss. Our prayers and thoughts are with you to call those family of those soldiers, of those Marines, of the sailor that perished on that awful day. But yeah, she has the time to post this. So I agree, it's a solemn place to never be disrespected and we will always remember it and respect it daily. Also, she said, The other part I agree with her is that I also agree with her when she said that it is her belief that someone who cannot honor and respect that should never stand behind the seal of the President of the United States. I totally agree with you, Kamala Harris. As Vice President under Joe Biden's presidency, you guys caused the death of all of those service members. You did not contact the family. You did not pay respect to them. So yes, you should never stand behind the seal of the president of the United States. That seal is way above your head. That seal is for someone who really deserves it, not for someone who flip flops on all her policy, which she doesn't have flip flops on everything. Someone who wants socialism here, someone who wants Marxist ideology here, someone who cares nothing about America, someone who doesn't care about our military, because let's be honest, if you guys truly really care about our military, you wouldn't have done that stupid shit. You wouldn't withdraw from Afghanistan the way it happened. And those Marines and the sailor and the army soldier, they would have been alive today. Those gold star family wouldn't be a gold star family. But because of your ignorance, because of your lack of respect, because of your lack of honor for a military, you don't care. You don't give a two flying F. So yes, 
You should never stand behind the seal of the President of the United States. You are undeserving of such title. And you say, we will always honor and remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Tell me, how have you honored the family, the go family of those soldiers and sailors and marine service members, allies of those people defending America? How have you honored them? I'm waiting. A new Democrats that think the Democrats is the salvation for this country, which they taking us to a doom, and you guys are too narrow-minded to realize the truth, to open up your eyes. Tell me, how has she honored those people? How has she honored our fallen ones? I'm still waiting. Oh, I saw at the DNC. Weren't they at the wrongful five, whatever they were called? Yes. I did not see her calling the Gold Star family to come there and speak. I did not see her calling those families. So you tell me, make it make sense. How in the heck is she honoring the memory and sacrifices of a fallen service member? How is she honoring? And I am so glad that the Gold Star family came up and spoke after they saw this, like they raised their voice and let it be known. Vice President Harris, my name is Steve Nakui. I'm the father of Lance Corporal Kareem M. Nakui. My name is Jim McCollum. I am the Gold Star Father of the United States Marine Corps Lance Corporal Riley McCollum. This is Mark Schmitz, Gold Star Father of Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz. My name is Darren Hoover, and I'm the Gold Star Father of the United States Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover. My daughter-in-law, Sergeant Nicole Leanne G., was killed in the Afghanistan exit at Abbey Gate. Our kids were murdered because of your administration. You were not at Dover for the dignified transfer. And no time have you reached out to me to offer your condolences, to offer thank you for Kareem's sacrifice and service. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call. There's so much as hear our kids' names said aloud. You have failed for three years and eight months to acknowledge our kids. Where were you and Joe Biden on August 26, 2024? Nowhere near Arlington Cemetery. You couldn't be bothered to be with us or even say our kids' names, just as you had done for the last three years. Vice President Harris, I ask you, why won't you return a call and explain to us how you call my daughter-in-law's death a success. President Trump has called. President Trump shows up. But President Trump takes the time to hear our loved one's stories. We invited him to be there. These are the only memories we get to make with our son, and it is you who is playing politics and trying to detract from our memories made that day. President Trump has been there for us. He's been a rock for us. He showed compassion for us. And he showed he truly cares for the families that truly do know what the ultimate sacrifice really is. Jared Schmitz. Here we are on a beautiful holiday weekend day. I gotta stop what I'm doing. Spending time with what's left of my family to address a heinous, vile, and disgusting post put out by Kamala Harris, trying to incite those that don't follow the truth, that President Trump was in Arlington as a political stunt. Shows you how much you know about the 13 families. We invited him to be there. Groundwork was put into place by Congressman Ice's office to make sure we followed protocol. Why did we want Trump there? It wasn't to help his political campaign. We wanted a leader. That explains why you and Joe didn't get a call. Imagine for a second that your kid is killed 
And there's a president of the United States willing to take you under his wing and listen to you. That's what we found in President Trump. Certainly not you, and certainly not Joe Biden. You have 13 families who have been waiting over three years to so much as get a phone call, to so much as hear our kids' names said aloud in the halls of Congress, at a State of the Union, hell, anything. The irony behind your post that you give a rat's ass about our military or our veterans, Jared's brothers and sisters in arms, the rest of the 12, their brothers and sisters in arms, is an outright lie. We're living proof of that. You're despicable. You have zero business running this country. And I pray to God, Americans wake the hell up and get your ass out of office. You have spit in our face for the last fucking time. That really impacted me. I felt that in my heart. You could hear the pain and the anger inside this ghost dark father. At the covered moment now, I am no longer in the service. My daughter is serving in the United States Army. If she were to get deployed, for crying out loud, I hope all in, and I pray to God every day that if she ever gets deployed, it's not under this current administration. It's not under these two people who care nothing about America, about our troops, about our way of life. You guys don't care about us. And you all know what happened with the withdrawal from Afghanistan. When every other major nation saw this, they laughed at us. They say, oh my God, the USA is weak at this moment. This is our opportunity to do what we've been trying to do. What happened? Russia invaded Ukraine. And there's a lot of reasons why this happened, but that's for another video. China started spending. Israel, Iran, so many freaking things has happened because everybody saw how weak and pathetic our commander-in-chief is, our vice president is, this covering administration is. Nobody fears America. Nobody respects America outside of here. And this is the people you guys want to vote for? This is the people that you want me to vote for? This is the people that is being backed by almost every media outlet there is? Because they also don't care about America. All they care is about their packets. Not you, average citizen. Not you, patriot. Not you, service member. Not you, veteran. Not you, gold star family. They don't care about us. I want to end this video by, I just want to say that I've lost a lot of service members due to the global war on terrorism in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in other parts of the world. And there's nothing more heartening than going to a funeral of one of your soldiers and seeing them there and having to face a family and have no words to comfort and have to hold it all in and not break down because you know the mission continues. You gotta keep on moving. You gotta complete your mission. You gotta soak it and keep it all internal until it's too much and then you break. This war, the Afghanistan and Iraq war, we had lost so many service members. I lost some over there. I lost quite a few here because they couldn't deal with the pressure. The fog of war, it was too much. They formed part of the 22. And 
to see this piece of so-called commander-in-chief and this administration talking about how much they respect our military, our hero, our fallen soldiers, our service members, our veteran, military family, gold star family, they respect them so much, but yet do nothing. As a commander-in-chief, whenever anyone in uniform dies overseas on a deployment in a war during your administration, it is your duty to call those families, to be present when those service members are brought to the state, to receive them there. That's what a commander-in-chief would do. I don't care about posting something online. You better call those family. You better show up. You better show your respect. That's it. I can't. Like, I'll see you in the next one.